South China Morning Post, 9th of September 2022. China-India border tensions are decreasing despite the shifting geopolitical scenario. A new geopolitical environment brought on by Western pressure on Russia is lowering tensions between China and India as their forces withdraw from the Gagra Hot Springs boundary in the Western Himalayas. Since fighting in the Galwa district of Ladakh two years ago that claimed the lives of an unknown number of Chinese and 20 Indian troops, the two Asian superpowers have been stuck in a standoff. The disengagement process started on Thursday, according to the Chinese Defense Ministry. It comes after 16 rounds of negotiations between military representatives from the warring parties since the fighting in June 2020. A.B. Abrams, a specialist on East Asian security at the University of London, claims that the neighboring nation's external concerns have prompted deeper ties. He cited the participation of China and India in the Russia-led Vostok 2022 war drills, which were held for a week and finished on Wednesday. The war in Ukraine and Western pressure on both nations to stray from their rigorous neutral posture, and mutual worries over hazards to the global economy should conflict be begun elsewhere, for example, in the Taiwan Strait," Abrams added. Due to sanctions, demand for oil in Russia has decreased, and customs figures indicate China may help to make up for the decline in shipments to Europe. The two have successfully avoided escalation, although their trade levels have continued to increase, notably Indian purchases from China, Abrams added, India won't be deploying 5G using Huawei technologies because of concerns over Chinese spy hardware and software. Both nations will profit by reducing tensions and deferring border issues for the future at a period of increased international volatility, increasing bilateral commerce, and shared dangers. Abrams said that Beijing and Delhi's core worldviews did not conflict, making their disagreement more manageable. However, China has hegemonic plans for India. According to the Chinese Defense Ministry, the agreement to retire was achieved after 16 rounds of commander-level discussions between the neighboring governments. Before the SCO conference, which would have lost all meaning if India had boycotted it. According to the statement, this is helpful to preserving peace and tranquility in the border regions. However, this will likely be short-lived as China wants to keep the pressure in the north of India, while she prepares to attack from the south. Although the military agreement was a short-term encouraging indicator, according to Zhu Feng of Nanjing University, it wasn't very confident that bilateral relations would immediately improve, as China has consistently broken its promises. In general, China parties must actively prevent tensions from rising. Right now, maintaining the status quo is the border region's top goal, according to Zhu. It is doubtful that border issues would be settled quickly, but confrontations may be avoided for a short period of time. He said India would not prefer to entirely side with the West because of its traditionally cordial connections with Russia. Delhi was looking for a middle ground with Moscow and Beijing. Next week's Shanghai Cooperation Organization Conference in Uzbekistan is planned to be attended by Chinese President Xi Jinping, Russian President Vladimir Putin, and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. This will be Xi's first travel outside China since the epidemic started. The group of 20 summits in Bali in November is also anticipated to bring the three presidents together. But China will return and attack India soon, so this is simply a lull in the storm.